The closing argument of the last Ben Kwasho generated a lot of feedback. A lot of people got back to me, um, some with questions, some with opinions, and some stunned, absolutely stunned about the ideas and the conclusions and the reasoning behind those conclusions. And I was also stunned by some of the arguments and some of the opinions that um, got back to me. And I wanted to take this show today to say, really? Really? Because this issue is so clear. The issue of our elimination is so clear. And I know that there is a lot of concern, especially as expressed to me by those who are looking for a way to coexist with La Republique du Cameroon, to co the Federalist, the one Cameroonians. Because if what is being laid out about the elimination of the Southern Cameroon, if you look at the evidence, which to me is so clear any reasonable person any human being who say that these are not people that you can coexist with so i took today for us to re-examine this issue because when we talk there is a lot of voices trying to cloud the issue that oh these people are, is, is a problem of marginalization. Oh, it's a problem of um, um, colonization or annexation. Which, for those who wish for the Southern Cameroonians to take their own destiny in their hands for Ambazonian to be an independent um, nation, is fine. Colonization or annexation under international law is a crime. That is clear. That is a crime. But we do not have the time or the patience or we do not have the opportunity to take this to a court of law, to take this to true international communities, to take our time and getting through processes of legality of we do not have those that time because what is happening in our land is not marginalization it is not annexation it is not colonization it is elimination ladies and gentlemen on the seat on the morning of June 6, 1992, the colonial forces of La Republique du Cameroon invaded the villages around Du area. What happened that day, what they call pool tax drive, has come to be known in Ambazonia as Black Saturday. Indo. When they invaded those villages, six people were shot dead. Immediately shot dead. They went on a rampage through the town. Homes were looted. Properties destroyed. Businesses set on fire and hundreds upon hundreds of people rounded up those who could not run into the bushes pregnant women um, kids parents 
nobody grandparents nobody could escape the dragnet they were rounded up and transported into an area almost like a concentration camp and what happened then what happened there could only generously be described as crimes against humanity that occur folks i don't know if you have kids watching this program it is a sad program some of the things that i am going to um, bring out might not be for your kid it might not be something that you want them to be around to hear wives were raped in front of their husbands physically they were raped by these gendarmes and police and army in front of their husbands after those physical rapes they were then raped with bottles bottles were inserted in women's vaginas guns their guns they were inserted in women's vaginas right there women those who were on menstruation they were asked to use their menses as body lotions on their skin men men were asked to lick women's menses there on that field fathers were stripped naked and axed and forced to stare at the vaginas of their daughters folks these are the people that anyone is asking us to coexist with bottles were ground on gravel bottles were crushed mixed on gravel and men and women were asked to crowd and walk on them i brought this at the top of the program to tell you that folks these are not acts of a colonizer they just form a foundation of the elimination of a people that is ongoing political social economic you know as i indicated under international law annexation is a crime the southern cameroons was to join cameroon only after a treaty of union the details of which had to be worked out by 1st October 1961. Unfortunately, before this date, La République du Cameroon amended its constitution of 1st January, passed it through its parliament on 6 September 1960 to include the Southern Cameroons and then sent her troops in September 1960 to occupy the Southern Cameroons. This was done without any treaty and under international law. So, such a treaty had to be deposited at the United Nations Secretary General pursuant to Article 102 and 103 of the United Nations Charter. That treaty was never deposited. The absence of this union treaty makes the entire action of La République du Cameroon and its administration over the territory of the former 
you entrust territory of southern cameroons an absolute illegality since 1991 and pure annexation which has degenerated into elimination under international law this is from a deposition from some of the south deposited for some of the southern cameroons youth league um, um, activists in jail Annexation is not only an illegal but illegality but a crime. And Cameroon has been benefiting enormously from the annexation of the Southern Cameroons in, in violation of the Latin legal principle. Nemo nudoto proprium to be tutudi. Gentlemen, this is lawyer speak and i'm not a lawyer what it means is nobody should benefit in any way whatsoever from a crime he has committed folks in our land in the southern cameroons we are suffering under the burden of elimination imposed on us through a process of illegality and if you don't believe the illegality of this believe these facts in 1984 von goji dinka was arrested and incarcerated in kondeng yaoundi for publishing a pamphlet the revolt of ambazonia he argued for the restoration of the state of Southern Cameroons. At the same time, at the same time with the promulgation, he was arguing that at the same time that Mr. Paul Bia promulgated law number 001 of 1984, remaining, renaming the United Republic of Cameroon as La République du Cameroon. The name that country had at its independence in 1960 without the southern cameroons if for goji dinka was wrong he would have been f killed in a firing squad for treason but he was court martialed before the military tribunal in Yaoundé in 1985. That court set him free. It set him free. He was right. He was correct. The state of Ambazonia should be in existence today. In December of 19, 2014, the military tribunal in Boya, suit number 152 slash ordinance slash ji slash tmb ruled declaring their incompetence to try a good colleague of mine Oben Maxwell Ayon they declared their incompetence to try him for recruiting, as they say, recruiting Ambazonians for a guerrilla warfare against the occupation of La Republique du Cameroon. Their incompetence was that Oben Maxwell was doing what any individual will do under an illegal occupation he is still in jail the high court of bamenda in suit number hcb slash 028 slash 92 between the state of southern cameroons alias ambazonia and two others versus la republic du cameroon and one other per justice from bay 
from Bay Richard gave value to the application for a declaratory judgment that the governance of La Republique du Cameroon over the territory of the former Southern Cameroons is illegal. You cannot build legality on illegality. You cannot. Why is all of this relevant? The relevance of what I just stated to my opening remark is the fact that from the beginning, La Republique du Cameroon was not interested in colonization or annexation because any court of law will say will indicate and tell them that what they their presence in southern cameroons is illegal their presence in southern cameroons is illegal under international law and so from the onset it was not a pro process of colonization it was not a process of assimilation or annexation it was a process of elimination. And as I laid out last week, from the political, it was very strategic, political, economic, social. It dismantled a political system. A colonizer, a colonized people is a territory governed by and for the colonizers by people who look like them who look like the colonized because the loot that the colonizers get from the territory would become imperiled if if the people look at those leading them and feel that no these are not our people these are foreigners and the world turns around and look especially as the world had indicated that colonization and annexation is a crime if they turn and look and they say yeah i mean look at that look at the person calling himself leader of that land he doesn't look like the people of that land in that case, your case is made. So to colonize you, they put you through their schools. They brainwash you. I mean, they clean you. They put you through um, a spin cycle. And what comes out at the, end, at the end of that is a good colonized man. Who you get him off of sleeve will not even know that he is a colonized man. It's like a Manchurian candidate, doctored, a virus put in to infect, to go about and show the good qualities of the colonizers. That is not what is happening with us. We don't have our people trained in their school, in, in, in their schools. In the economies, they train their citizens and put them in our land. We don't have in the civil service. No, the governors, the deals, the district officers, it is their people put in our land. The governors put in our land. The doctors, we don't have places in queues. They train their people and put in our land. Where do you think? from the political sphere, all of this, where do you think our citizen go to? Do we have private places where it, they can train those doctors and put them in our hospitals? 
Do you walk into a hospital in the southern Cameroon and you look from the administrators to the doctors on the floor? Do you see your people there? Where do you think those who should naturally, under any circumstances, you are middle class, where do they go? Where are they? Do, do you go to, will you go to Ngaoundere and see them? Are they in, in, in Vomeka? In Garwa? Are they there? No. They are not there. They are driving bent skin on the street. And if that doesn't work, they go to the farm and they look for little subsistence farming. But for the grace of God, that we had some of these farmlands in our backyard and our industrious people. Because economically, it has been a total the investment in our land not investment not even a status quo a policy of absolute de-investment right by the time we came into what some that sort of coexistence that was indicated it was that you know what we are going to come together for a common good at that time we had the Yoke power station. We had power camp. Right? We had the um, uh, Victoria Deep Sea Port. We had the um, um, PW, the Public Works Department. We had the Cameroon Bank with over 78 billion um, reserves. We had the Santa Coffee Estate. We had WADA folks we did not need to go through um Douala Bafusam to get into um, from Boya to Bamenda we had the Tico airports where are they today you know when you coexist with someone even in a process of marginalization where you relegate someone to the periphery of public life political life you relegate them those people have a means of existence when you systematically power in any society you cannot have enough power so we are not talking about something that is like efficiency you are looking for efficiencies in every society power so when you come to a society that has power instead of augmenting that you dismantle a power station and you ship out of that land that power the instruments the equipment into your own territory where does the knowledge that those people normally accumulate where does it go where does the existence the source of income that those people will be employed in that um, 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 economic activity where does it go you did not ship those people along with you they remain there when you destroy the marketing board when you destroy the coffee estates when your policy is to destroy the, ra the routes and make the people to go through your territory can you, in that economic deprivation that you deprive the people, can you say it was done for anything other than eliminating an economic underpinning for these people so that they fall to the bottom? And in that 
process what then is there any industry one industry that has been established in the southern Cameroon that you can say employs a people and build a middle class I established um, um, last week a process of how it comes about that more than 90 percent of the economically viable land in a country like Zimbabwe come to be in the hands of three percent of the population the white minority population and that more than 97 percent of the of Zimbabweans had to make do with three percent of the land I asked the question that do you think that these things just happen out of just a process of chance folks when you de-invest absolutely dismantle the economic underpinning of a people where do they live what is their cost of living can they maintain their cost of living and so what do they start losing they start losing their birthright right their birthright is gone because suddenly in order for that family to exist the acres of land that their parents gave that was passed down to them in generation that become imperial because that becomes a source of income for them they don't have any industries they don't have any classrooms from which they could be employed their classrooms have been taken from them their courts have been taken from them their politics have been taken from them so they start said selling family heirlooms like lands like valuable stuff in their families in their village that should be kept and who buys them their next brother what you call their countryman is also under desperate situation like them and suddenly the towns are gone they are now in the peripheries in the villages and when these people when the teachers that is that has been exported from kong samba that has been ex 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 exported from betwa once that teacher established in his classroom or that justice established in in the towns and their families in the towns what do they start looking for land in which to expand and create their ranches and so they follow you into the village to get those lands and that is how a people are eliminated that is a natural order of elimination we are not i haven't even spoken i haven't even spoken of the warfare that has been waged and i make all this case hoping that i am making them in a logical fashion in a logical manner for you to be able to follow because folks we are being eliminated in our land as i said last week don't forget that dissatisfied people dissatisfied highly top rank people from the rich from the Paul Bias regime from the government of la republic du cameroon saw in frundi a vehicle through which they could get to power in la republic du cameroon 
I used um, Mr. John Gu Frundi. Ni John Frundi. I used him last week to bolster a point. And I really want to drive home that. Because this is not somebody who is just a street vendor. This is not somebody that just gets out of his house and blows air to people. He is a respected individual in La Republic du Cameroon. What he says has weight. And it is very important because he is not a southern he, he is not of the opinion that the southern Cameroon yeah, based on all the horror that he has faced in La Republic du Cameroon has the right granted to him as a citizen of the world and as a child of God to determine to have to be able to determine his own destiny in the land of his birth that is not John Fundis for him and his politics which is fine for him is that the Southern Cameroonian is a La Republic du Cameroonian, and so his destiny lies in the French colonial empire of Cameroon in Yaoundé. And he is a hero in Yaoundé because he won an election. Everybody knows he won that election, but then he did not get passage to power in Yaoundé and still coexist with them and walk and talk and eat laugh and cry with them in Yaoundé that is not someone who is going to put a knife in the back of La Republic to Cameroon and so what he says that concerns the elimination of southern Cameroons should be taken for the how critical it is because he stood in front tens of thousands of southern Cameroonians cheering him on and was very very clear that in a few years time half of those people will be dead and the reason because whenever any gendarme, police, or army in the in La Republic du Cameroon is diagnosed with the AIDS virus, they are immediately transferred into the southern Cameroons. And so, listen at the top of the program carefully. When I brought up Black Saturday in Do and what they go into our villages and our towns during their Kale Kales and their drives and they do. These are the individuals. These are the biological weapons that are exported into our land. And they do they go on this type of rampages. And the result is our elimination. And so there are these things I always make mention. Do you think that these things just happen by chance? When I was growing up, when you were growing up, I, I think. Was it common to see a dead body? I mean, a dead body was, it was such an uncommon phenomenon to see a dead body when we were growing up. For years. Just a few years ago. I don't know about your village, but I know that in my village and in other villages in Akum, 
the phone the quiffons they had to pass an ordinance that anybody died in the village the dead body cannot be kept overnight because people were fall, falling by flies there will be about three four five dead bodies around and people don't know which one to go and so an ordinance was passed that immediately once the dead body lie in the village by that evening that dead body is buried because the next day, the, folks, this were it was it is not and were not by chance. Listen to Mr. Frundi. Listen to what happened in Do. Listen to the consequences of what the Ngumba houses, the funds, had to deal with as dead body. I mean, you even those in the diaspora, you call home sometimes. Just one week after, I say how, or they say, oh, you know, this 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 one is dead. This one was dead. This one, in one little quarter, one week, one week. So I say this thing, and tears comes to my eye, because, my goodness. We might have just been looking at this stuff and just thinking that oh it is the sign of the is the sign of the times. No folks. A systematic elimination of a people. Why? Why? Because you know what? We are a threat. To a colonial empire. In coming on to this show, I was just um, trying to research a statement made by one Rwandan who were during the genocide in Rwanda. This young girl, they had escaped and um, tens, hundreds of them were on top of a mountain. They were, quote unquote, surrounded by French troops um, in the guise of under the UN. But they had known the role that the French troops were playing in Rwanda. So this girl, Pen, a very sad letter to the world and told them that you know tomorrow we will be dead with our families the French should pull out the Hutus got on, on, on top of that hill and they were butchered. France proud of her rule during the Rwandan genocide. This is an article written by Fiona Cumberland in which she said that she wrote that in reference to Rwanda, the French um, um, politician Jacques Mayard claimed that France can and should be proud of the role she played in this unfortunate country. The evidence is substantial, she wrote, from actively supporting the Habyarimana regime to training and arming the forces, the force army Rwanda, FAR, to the alleged participation in acts of genocide. The evidence is substantial, she wrote, of Francis Rowe. Despite this, a small faction of individuals like Jacques Mayard defend France's rule as well intentioned and positive.
Rwanda was a strategic acquisition that was intended to bolster France's international prestige as well as enhance her economic dominance in Francophone Africa. In keeping with traditional French African policy, national interests were prioritized over Rwandan concerns and distinctly new colonial relationship emerged between Rwanda and France. Overwhelming evidence testifies to France's awareness of the impending genocide before it was officially declared. Denial to this degree is inexcusable. But deliberate misinformation of the media further indicts Fra Fra French officials in Kigali, Kigali, Rwanda, of complicity in the massacres and holds responsible those in Paris who ignored information brought before Parliament of that complicity. So regardless of context, um, Cumberland wrote, the French military continued to train and support the far, the far that's for say, Ame, um, 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 Rwandese soldiers throughout the ethnic violence that preceded the genocide, as well as maintaining arms imports and distribution. They had both motivation and means. Fiona Cumberland wrote, and listen to this, the suppression of Anglophone Tutsis for continued geopolitical dominance and an army willing to fight to secure it. I can repeat that. Let me repeat that. Regardless of context, the French military continued to train and support the Fosse Armee Rwandais soldiers. These are the people who carried the genocide. Throughout the ethnic violence that preceded the genocide, as well as maintaining arms, import, and distribution, they had both motivation and means that is france the suppression which is the motivation the suppression of anglophone tutsis for continued geopolitical dominance and an army willing to fight to secure it what do they call us in la republic du cameroon They call it Anglophones. Anglophones. This is Rwanda, folks. This is Rwanda. A Francophone colony. And this is what they outline. Willing to kill a million people. As they sought to suppress Francophones who learn English. How about a people whose culture is underpinned by that language? Whose land, the loot coming out of that land, that little land of Amazonia dwarfs Rwanda. When we talk of elimination, don't think that this is a joke that is being played, that this is something that was not well thought out, well intentioned, and as it said, and uh, as in the case of Rwanda, as Fiona Cumberland wrote, they had both motivation and means. The fact
fact that we close our eyes to cover our ears does not mean that there are facts that are ongoing on the ground. And if you don't know the centrality of La Republique to Cameroon to the French colonial empire in Africa, if you don't know how strategic La Republique du Cameroon is to them and how any threat posed to that strategic, strategically placed colony, how serious that threat is taken, no now. Because through La Republique du Cameroon, Central Africa, Chad, Niger are all Gabon, Congo, they are all tied in a web through Yaoundé. If you don't know how central that is, believe Gaddafi. Believe the death of Gaddafi, the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, who died because he threatened, just threatened that hegemony that is the French colonial empire by seeking to create the African IMF that the French and the Europeans came to invest in. And he said that no. No Europeans need apply. He put 25 billion down and asked Nigerians and the rest to fill up. And the 25 billion was significant that he put down. It was just a significant gesture because that is what the French through the IMF, Alassane Ouattara, used to buy up Africa after they devalue the France CFA, rendering every person, every businessman in, Af in French colonial Africa that could have challenged in buying some of what the IMF um, 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 in, in putting that 25 billion down put a structural um, um, adjustment and asking for um, um, industries to be Decent to be um, 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 sold to the private to privatize privatization of industry and state paratators status. Gaddafi put the same twenty five billion down to create the African IMF and undercut the CFA front. That's why he died. I spoke when I went to London. I had read about this when I went to London during the marriage of my sister-in-law. I met an individual, an African, Ambazonian, who lives in Australia, whom Gaddafi had tapped. And he had been flying from Australia to um, Tripoli in Libya. And they were working on these folks. I met someone face to face and we talked about it. The French did not send troops into Libya. Libya is an oil rich country. You did not see any troops landed there. The French were the first. Even Barack Obama was accused of leading from behind because he was dragged to a nail into that war the french without any waiting for anybody had already recognized a quote-unquote rebel group somewhere in, in 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 libya and they were already flying bombing planes before days after the americans and the british arrived because they had discovered that if they don't take immediate action even without these people maybe there would be stasis and gaddafi might remain so with how the wealth that was in Libya, you did not see them land one troop there. Why? That wasn't their aim. No, 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 no. That wasn't their aim. It was to kill 
Gaddafi's very strategic, very strategic move to undercut the French colonial empire in Africa, undercut the CFA France, which is their loot. And that's why he died. That is why a million people died in Rwanda. So believe that Gaddafi lost his life for challenging this French hegemony in Africa. That Rwanda, a million people in Rwanda died because of a few Anglophone Tutsis. You know. And just what the French feared in Rwanda came to pass. In an article by Chris Magriel titled Rwanda to switch from French to English, he wrote in October of 2008, the Rwandan government is to switch the country's entire education system from French to English in one of the most dramatic steps to date in its move from Francophone influence. The shift to education solely in English is part of a wholesale realignment away from French influence that includes applying to join the Commonwealth. Underpinning this move, Mr. Magri wrote, is a long and bitter dispute with France born of its support for the Hutu regime that offers, oversaw the 1994 genocide of eight, over 800,000 Tutsis, which has seen the French ambassador expelled and the, clo the closure of the French Cultural Center, International School and Radio Station. So folks, just what France feared and orchestrated the killing of over 800 Rwandans, 800,000 Rwandans came to pass with the Rwandans absolutely expelling France from their country and changing their system from French to English. If I can go on and read the article, um, he wrote that the Rwandan trade and industry minister, Vincent Karega, told Kigali's New Times newspaper that the country is looking beyond the Francophone world. French is spoken only in France, some parts of West Africa, parts of Canada and Switzerland. He said, English has emerged as, the ba as a backbone for growth and development, not only in the region, but around the world. But here is the kicker. There is little doubt that a deep loathing of all things French is also an important factor. The latest salvo against French influence comes weeks after the Rwandan government accused more than 30 French politicians, officials and military officers of complicity in the genocide, including the late president Francois Mitterrand, and called for their prosecution and France backed these Hutu as he wrote France backed the, these Hutus because of the fear of Anglophone influence in that genocide so ladies and gentlemen that is what is laid before you in black and white the levels of depravity with which La République du Cameroon and their French backers are willing to go in Libya and Rwanda who don't have any bit of in economic influence. That is the level they have to go, they had to go to maintain the French colonial empire and the, Fran the Francophone influence in Africa. So think about you. Think about Ambazonia.
this absolutely cultural nothing nothing in their makeup to even white watch the fact that they are not culturally different from francophone think about this land that is bread and butter to la republic that has almost more than 65 of this central french colony more than 65 percent of its gdp generated from that territory this central where its president is petted is petted so much and is willing to go on air and say how he is the best student of france do you think that they will allow these anglophones these southern cameroonians to go forth and multiply do you think they are crazy from the beginning our elimination had been on the table and they had systematically gone about that fact so when i hear when i read stuff like anglophones should be congratulated for not taking up arms by ben muna it just aches me from the bottom of my stomach it just aches me I mean, I don't need to tell, to, to, to tell the, the learned barrister that legality cannot be built on illegality. That is constitutional history. That is, when you talk about legal, that is a fundamental basis of the legal profession. I mean, historically, cannot build legality on illegality and we have laid consistently the illegality that is underpinning the occupation of the southern Cameroons. so he wrote barista ben muna said has said in an article in an article by yerima kimi nsom that barista ben muna has said anglophones in cameroon should be congratulated for not choosing the path of war in the face of several years of marginalization by the francophone dominated government he said that we anglophones should be lauded for choosing the path of peace and dialogue barista muna said elderly anglophones deliberately avoided any form of violence as a solution to their problems because they lived the bitter ordeals during the UPC crisis in the 60s. Folks, here is what Thomas Gray said. The material world is a world of fleeting glory in which death is the necessary end fleeting glory death is a necessary end we are being told here by the barrister that we did not act because of the ordeal of the upc something that should be spoken by a La Republic to Cameroon, not an Ambazonia. The UPCs was a La Republic to Cameroon phenomenon. Yes, it touched the Ambazonian, but that was at the borders. Folks, to use that camouflage and hide behind is an escapist excuse that should not be tolerated because it is one of those viruses that infect a free people you elderly anglophones did not resist them i just quoted you 
Not one, not two, not three, not four. I just quoted you southern Cameroonians, rounded up, tortured to death. I just explained to you how a southern Cameroonian you leave. tell these gentlemen that Chuku Chuku is took. You know, I mean, make, let me make, 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 make a talk for language. You, you hear Chuku Chuku, right? That sticks are inserted in their genitals. and tell them that your parents did not stood up and resist because of the ordeal of the UPC. Tell that to the people on do. Tell that to the girls that are removed from their dormitories, raped and asked to roll in sewage in our streets. Is this what we have come to? You know, I'm not going to... I, I had planned to read a lot of this trash. I'm not going to read it. That will be the end of it. I just wanted... to indicate that... you know what? We are not a cowardly people. We are the descendants of King Kuva. This anti-colonialist who fought for his people. We are heirs to this type of heroes who was buried in an unmarked grave because they did not even want the colonizer to know that they have gotten the, the chief. To know that Kuva will rise one day and fight under the Mount Fako. We are heirs of a Galiga who stood up and look at a colonizer, somebody coming to colonize him as an ally. Look to use him to go and bring weapons for him because he wanted to be a paramount king in the whole of the region. And that guy, although he had his own aims, brought those arms and those people and we are heirs to the meta funds, to the funds of Bafu, to the Mancon funds, to all these people who stood up to the Galiga and his ally. Do not fear those guns and thought that by God we are free people and nobody was going to take them. Are we going to allow this, our elimination to go on are we going to succumb or are we going to stand up and say that by God we came from the long line of heroes. We came from these people. We are sons and daughters of these people. So from what has been laid out, there is absolutely no way of coexisting with these people. The federalists are dead. There is no federation. The thing that we should be very cognizant of is how are we going to coexist with a colonial empire at our border? That is what we are. We we should be. That is the the only discussion. Is it possible for us to coexist with these people, or are we going to revive in our land as the the Rwandans? has taught us a lesson that there is no coexistence, there is no way of soft handling this stuff. You get it. It's a cancer that you get and throw away. That's why to Rwanda today, Rwanda is light years ahead of where they were after a genocide that wiped them out. The tool of their development is to get, was to cut off that cancer. French and everything French had to go. And they tell us how you win your freedom and you keep your freedom. And Laurent Gbagbo in Ivory Coast taught us the opposing lesson. 
that when you free yourself and you don't treat you don't treat the disease that has infected their land as a cancer that should be wiped, cut off and wiped out. You don't send the French out. You don't clear your land out of that virus. He taught us how you lose, you win your freedom and then you lose it. Because today, Alassane Ouattara, the person who instigated, who was put as the face of the destruction of Africa and the buying of Africa with a mere 25 billion francs that resulted in the death of one of the heroes of Africa, Muammar Gaddafi. That person today sits on the seat that Laurent Gbagbo for merely 10 years sat on. But because he just treated this as let us live, let us try to coexist, that is his land is back. In the grip and so that is a lesson that we must learn there is no coexistence so if the thing that the southern ambazonia because we are gone we are gone we are a free people ambazonia will live is living in our land in the mind of our people our people are already gone we are a free people the only point now is what is going to be our relationship between us and La Republique du Cameroon and folks. Donald Trump talked about building a wall in the southern border to keep refugees out. If La Republique du Cameroon do not free themselves, if by the day we get into Boya, the, the currency still being used in La Republique du Cameroon is the currency titled Colony Francais Africaine, the CFA franc, we will begin to build a wall. A war that Donald Trump has not even thought of from the Mongol right through Matazm. And the day that they free themselves, we will look over that wall at them and say, Okay, can we talk? Because we have a job to do in our land in order to revive the land, the hopes and the destiny of our people.